movie to share with us on how Nanyang Technological University, NTU, uses WordPress in classrooms. So Philippi is an pr uh, assistant professor with the school in the School of Physical and Mathematical Sciences in NTU, while Joan is a senior librarian at the library. She collaborates closely with the faculty and other users to design blogs, provides consultation and training on applying appropriate social media tools and strategies in their work. So let's welcome the both of them. Okay. Um, thank you, everyone. I'm here physically. Uh, Philippe will be here virtually. He will appear later. <laughs> Sorry, because he, he got to be um, Suryanka now. Okay, so uh, hi, my name is Joan. I'm a librarian with the NTU, Nanyang Technological University. And I came in touch with WordPress maybe four years back because of my job uh, in NTU. Because the university's, uh, the library supports the university blogging platform, which is on WordPress. So how it all started is, okay, this is a typical day in the life of a Professor X in NTU. So NTU now actually moves towards this pedagogy called the flip classroom. So you, you will see that, you know, then uh, means the students actually has to study first about the subject, and when they come to the classroom, the professor only facilitates. So the professor has two options. How do I do a flipped classroom? I can use a BB is Blackboard, which is a learning management system, or it could be um, WordPress. So our working relationship is uh, designing the request. The library actually supports together with um, the IT department, and then when we receive the request, we work with the faculty closely to create the content. Maybe you will ask like, why the library is doing this instead of the IT department. The library is in this role because we see um, the content differently. We are very, uh, we are the specialists and the professional in looking at information structure. And later I will share with you the case study and you will understand why library is involved in this. Okay, by the way, this is Philippe. And he's going to talk. Okay, um, because he was away, so he especially got the IT to do this uh, video for the talk. Ah, is the microphone in? Just play. Okay. Hmm? Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, give you guys a flight. And this play first? Mm -hmm. I can't do the volume. Mm. Comes, or maybe we need to control, control. Mm. Yeah. and I teach chemistry at NTU. The problem I see with teaching uh, hardcore sciences such as chemistry is that there is a disconnection between the concept and, and the real life. The, the concepts that for people to understand all the advances to come from, let's say, new pharmacological uh, compounds, drugs, it's very easy to understand oh, it's a new drug, but they don't understand that there is a lot of chemistry behind it, for example, or chemistry behind uh, materials, it's very difficult for people, for the students to understand, translate from what they study to their actual real life. So this is why we uh, decided to go with these uh, blocks. And the block will help them produce the video. The, blo the block is used as a script. What do they need to do? They need to find out the chemical concept they want to talk about, explain it, see how it is applied to society, and also the block will be the catalyst for accounting, everything they do every week, their meetings, and all the activities. Because after all, one of the big differences is that rather than going from individual work as traditional uh, courses, they do have to work in groups. So the task is marked as a group. They need to be able to develop soft skills. You know, so nowadays, most international companies, they are a uh, Assign, the assignments are done in teams, so they need to learn how to cope 
interacting with other people to finalize a task successfully. This is why we decided to do the blocks, which was a small task. And why did we decide to do the blocks in, in WordPress? Because WordPress uh, is, uh, the web pages in the world are done by WordPress. So it will bring them some uh, skills that they will really be able to utilize outside the course. Okay, he's actually a longer video, so I have to cut him off. <laughs> Okay, just to share the case scenario, um, how it come about his chemistry course is actually with, um, for the case study I'm going to share is with 306 students in 51 groups. So there will be a weekly exercises with four questions and he wants them to have a final script, uh, each group, and two video submissions on an assigned topic on chemistry. And then he also won for peer evaluation. So usually when the professor comes to us, he will just give us this kind of vague requirements from the instructors, but we need to kind of transcribe the requirements into something that works on WordPress. So example, we look like there's a group, so maybe they should have individual blocks for the each group. Then we need to have structural content of so-called the required final script. So we work with him like he needs them to come out with what is the methods, what is the concept of the assigned topic, which is chemistry, I don't really understand. Then uh, how do they upload the videos onto the main blogs and how do the group tracks their progress on the blog that he could read it uh, on the course blog, the main blog. So um, based on that scenario, we actually come up with the structure together with him. So every student, we will uh, share with them, like they need to talk about introduction, about the team, chemical concept, implications to society, minutes and assignment. Actually, before um, I need to do this presentation, I didn't know how the students felt. But when the students shared with us that, um, Forcing them to structure the essay this way in a group actually helps them to really think through how to write it so clearly that everybody who reads their course blog, their group sites will understand the concept easily. Instead of you write your own paper and you, you could really get into all the chemical jargons. So the blogs actually uh, do help them to think through the concept better. And then how to manage like group minutes for him, this is his view. We have to customize and face, uh, WordPress allows you to password the page. So we password protect it for him. Uh, and then he could look through all the different minutes that is shared by the students who is more prolific meeting, who is not really meeting, who post the meetings, uh, etc. He could view it from um, his own course blog, which is this page is restricted to him. Then, of course, we also need to talk about the workflow. When we come up with the structure, you know, it's not just a technical thing. We actually need to look at the workflow. Like, he has a weekly exercise with four questions each. And then, he needs to be able to self-create questions. You can understand that researchers are, are very busy. And usually, maybe on that if before the class, then he can come up with a question. So he needs to be able to be comfortable and tech savvy enough to post the questions himself. And then he wants, you know, the students to actually, he himself for his questions actually need images because it's chemistry. He needs to have mathematical formulas because again, it's chemistry. And the students, after they submit the exercise, they need to only see their own submission and not the others. And then also the students must have an option to submit text or using images. So when he gave us all the requirements, we kind of need to work closely with him, test, uh, do a mock-up, and then let him try out whether he's comfortable with the workflow before we roll out to the students, because it's a big class. And if there's an error, it's very hard to call back. This course has run for the third time. So actually there has been iterations even for the third time because every time uh, he's more comfortable with WordPress, uh, he's more comfortable with technology, we kind of know what's the class requirements better. So he's looking at this participatory teaching methods that he wants the students to really discuss more and do peer-to-peer -peer learning on their own instead of uh, depending on 
him feeding the information. So the blogs actually help, WordPress actually helps to, to do that. So um, first, we remind ourselves, we think of usage, not the design, because this is really about teaching. So everything like for the instructor, course curriculum, we need to look at his curriculum, his preferred engagement style, like does he wants the students, he wants to receive email notification when the student posts, or he's okay, he's comfortable to just read it off the blog, and what is his technology comfort level? What is the future integration? When I say this, is like this course we have run for um, the third time. The first round actually, we treat it like, you know, this is the first test. If it's good, it stays. If it's not good, that's it. That's the, we, we are not going to repeat the class. It's a huge class. But then uh, it works. And then after the third class, second class, second round, actually, we consider how to archive good content from selected students' groups. And then, of course, we need to speak to the instructor, their lingo. I mean, there's no point that I tell them, okay, you can use this plugin, then we're going to put the code here, then you get this, it pulls here, you know, he doesn't understand. So we have to explain to him in his, his language. Then we, of course, also have to think of the student's usage, like what is the student's comfort level. Different students actually, uh, you know, some students are more tech savvy, some are not comfortable. There is a different access points also, meaning uh, some students use laptops, some use mobile phones, some use tablets. How are they accessing the blogs? Different devices, different access points like on-site, off-site, you know, they do it from um, school campus network or away from school campus network because course block is restricted. So what we did was, um, this is actually a slide from our IT. We did this uh, one-time login using case. <coughs> the case service is a ticket-based uh, authentication token. So when the user clicks to log in to the blog, the user actually get forwarded to the case server login. And then uh, via the case client, then the user has to authenticate using the, the NTU username and password. And actually, it will just issue a ticket. And then the ticket will pass to our um, so-called Active Directory, the database where all the user's information is there. It will check, and then if it is okay, it will pass it back, and then the user can access the blocks. So this is how we want to make it very easy for the students so they don't have to remember a separate password. Of course, we also looked at, uh, most important, the versatility and flexibility. What I mean is, the, the whole platform has to be very uh, fluid, is to be very easy to adapt or change along the course timeline. And then it must also have the ability to modify easily, not only by um, me and my colleagues, because we are the people who has been doing the WordPress, the administrators, but also by the students and the faculty for their own content. So the plugin we use is actually um, Formidable Forms plugin. I'm not sure if anybody is familiar with this plugin or have you used. This is a very powerful plugin. Yeah, so, but we use it as a class. We, we don't use it like a, like a real form kind of thing. And I will show you what we use it. And uh, we use another plugin called My Class plugin to do the class uh, management. So for uh, My Class plugin, what we did was actually um, because all the this plugin allows you to connect multiple sites on your MU environment, multi-site environment, onto one another site. So he has his own main site, and then he could manage their restrictions, whether the students can post, whether they cannot post, whether he can and he can read them directly also. And Depending on how we set the restriction, actually the students can also read them and they can comment directly from one page instead of going to every individual pages. So this is very useful for managing multiple sites content. Then uh, we talk about the formidable form plugin. What we did was actually use it for the weekly form submission. So we have to keep it very simple for him. Uh, we don't expect him to go and create, I mean the instructor, Felipe, to go and create the form. So uh, 
what uh, our team did was we create the form, this form A, I should call it form A, for him to submit his questions. And then after he create, submit his question, it will fit to this form B, which the students can view, and then they can submit their answers. So it will look like this. And then after the students submitted all their answers, it will appear into this format with the questions and the answers. And the students will get a copy. Uh, or they can only get uh, the, their own answers. And then he himself, again under a protective view, will actually get to see all the submissions. And because his class is huge, so you know you cannot expect him to go through like 300 over uh, student submissions. So um, we also use formidable form to do the filtering. So formidable form actually is very powerful, and it allows you to have the filtering entries. So if you set the parameters, you are able to actually the view under the parameters under the view. You can actually um, sort it accordingly, automatically. So it's very convenient for him. So um, likewise, we use the same thing for the peer evaluation because um, initially uh, he was like, there's a huge group. There's 51 groups of them and every group has six students and everyone, there will be disagreement because they come from uh, different schools coming together for one program. So uh, they want to be able to have a place for them to voice out if uh, they like their teammates or they dislike their teammates. So uh, this is the peer evaluation. So by selecting the group, they will only see their own teammates' name. Then they could make the options. But most important is the back end thing where he could actually filter again the results by the groups or by the name of the students. So it's very convenient for him. So um, most important is about interaction and engagement. You have seen Philippe, so now I'm going to let you see his student. They have very kindly volunteered to be part of this when video. When we started this project, we faced a lot of difficulties because we were, every, we were very new in the area of editing blogs or editing videos. However, throughout the project, we learned a lot from both our professors and our uh, teammates. So uh, throughout the project, we actually learn new skills like video editing, like blogging, you know, and this I believe will be very helpful in our jobs or any other projects in future. One wonderful thing about technology is that it saves us a lot of time. Instead of having to submit our weekly assignments physically to our professor's pigeonhole, we can now upload our assignment answers onto the blog instead. And so that helped us to save a lot of time and be a lot more efficient. I guess it's the advancement of technology. Accessibility is definitely the one that I'll go for. Because blogs and videos they are online 24 7, while professors are humans themselves who need rest. So with these blogs online, we can actually access them anytime on our own convenience. To be able to see the videos and actually replay them in case we have any uh, issues. Um, yeah, I guess this is the big, biggest takeaway of how I leverage technology to actually learn the accessibility of 24 7. Because it's a very fun and interesting way to learn that's different from the usual lecture tutorial style learning. And like what my professor once famously said, everyone can study, but in order to differentiate yourself from the rest, you gotta have other soft skills such as communication and co collaboration skills. We could really see that the students uh, learn more, the grades were slightly higher. Uh, and also the, the material they produced, the blogs and the video, were, were really professional. I was really surprised to see how much time they put on something that they refuse or they object at the beginning. I really think it was a success on that point. The students were at the end really, really engaged on, on their projects and trying to make the most uh, out of it, as well as uh, relatively happy to work in teams because they manage to meet people from, from uh, different backgrounds and not just the friends. Okay, so actually this course has a story. If you go to, I forgot, it's called like some NTU students Facebook. There are some of the students projects. When the first time we roll out, the class usual enrollment is 300 plus, it drops to 180. 
because they was like, oh, there's so much work, and we have to do this, this blog thing and video thing. And then the second round, we actually have the enrollment back up because the review was good, and he actually got a teaching award. I mean, a Philippine class I actually got a teaching award because of the interaction he got and the feedback from the students. So, um, yeah, with that, uh, I end with the students' nice pictures. There's a huge bunch of them, but I just randomly pick a group picture. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Joan. So, uh, any of you have a question for Joan regarding this? Anyone? Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh -huh. Um, I'm a bit of a novice at this, so pardon me if my question is really stupid. Oh. But for the My Class plugin that you use, mm. um, could you use it like if you were, if you had a service and you had clients and then you wanted to create portfolios for the clients that only they could access? Could you use it in that way as well? Portfolio for your clients, yeah, meaning? I suppose if you, if you were individuals. a service provider of some sort and you mm. had different clients and mm. you had to show them what that you've done that you wanted to put on your website. Mm. Um, so could you sort of flip the model so that they, when they um, signed in, mm. um, they could only see the work that you've put up for them and not the work you've put up for your other clients, let's say? Could it work that way? It could, but I wouldn't recommend okay. because um, I think, you know, if you just create the site and restrict and then give them the access might be more convenient rather than going through this plugin thing and then they have to go into the dashboard they have to click and they have oh, to go to another interface yeah. because you see the students need to see all the different their classmates group blocks also that's why it makes sense yeah so i'm instructing myself uh at uni and i was wondering i mean that seems a lot of back-end work a lot of back-end mm. that you need so if i would have set this up Myself. I mean, can you sort of estimate how much time or, or personal hours that you're Are you to? are you from NTU? I am. I just I read emails. I think I emailed the library to. I'm a yeah. I'm a guest prof from, from Sweden. But oh, NTU okay. Staying on the so I'm watching. Then it's very fast because you have us. I'm leaving at the end of the year. I'm going back to Sweden, and I wouldn't want to implement this. I have to somehow convince me. I mean, NTU has got loads of money compared to us. Okay. So you've got people, you've got people working in the back end, but. I mean, how much, if I were to pitch this to try and get it started, mm. um, I mean, rough estimate how much work I would have to requisition. Oh, okay. Again, it depends on your class size. So for Philippines class, is a huge class. But um, I think we, we get it out quite quickly, so maybe give us a big time. But uh, we did the, all the exercise for him up front with... Uh, dummy exercise, so he could just change the questions quickly and publish it. So, but right. I meant how more that sort of the organizational point of view, like mm -hmm. I have to buy personnel. Oh no, uh, because no, and no, no, oh. not into you, I don't. Ah. I, if I'm going to now pitch it back home, mm -hmm. I want to say, hey, I want to start something like this, mm -hmm. and they say, okay, well, how many hours of personnel do you need to buy? I mean, how much did you guys ah. invest in setting this up? You know what I mean? It's actually manpower because WordPress.org is kind of uh, open source, free. Uh, the plugins we use is free, so um, but it's the maintenance, it's the manpower. That's exactly my question. Yeah. How much was that? We could we could do a training for you. It's very actually very easy, like getting one or two numbers, yes. because uh, for me the for uh, for me the uh, form yes. is very powerful. Oh, so all you do is he needs to go uh, depends on get all drag and drop, and then you, you can set it uh, set it up like within a couple of minutes. Mm. So uh, if anybody yeah. wants to do an uh, illustration of how for me the form can be used, I can do mm. that for them. Mm. So I can teach you my business card, and I can share with you set a couple of minutes. Mm. And I think that's the beauty of WordPress, it's the speed of implementation. Mm. So you got all this plugin and you plug in it, and it's very fast. Yeah, a formidable form is just drag and drop, but you need to, um, depends on what's your requirement. So the, um, if you go to the forum, a lot of people also give the script 
to how to pull the things depending on how sophisticated you want to, to want what what you want to do. So yeah, I could give you the links and I could also share how to do your own installation. Yeah. So how long did it take your team to get all of this up and running? For this single site? Because we manage the whole university yeah, site. I think about a week. a week. Yeah. But then the, um, the, it's like not the whole team is doing this. Yeah, so. Yeah. So, like, with two people? Or? Yeah, maybe about two people. Would it be possible to package this and release this as an open source project? Oh, I must ask my boss. Where is he? <laughs> 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 I don't know if, if my boss is here. Is there, is there any particular reason why you chose this package instead of something like LearnDash, which probably packages every, all of this functionality and mm. has a lot of extensibility? We actually also purchase uh, LearnDash. So we actually have um, two uh, installations. One is supported by Campus Press. So this example I show you is under Campus Press. So Campus Press is hosted solution, so we cannot install our own plugins. But we use LearnDash for our own self-hosted one, and we do, um, yeah, use it for other classes. Because it's, it just seems a little bit too convoluted to go through formative forms and then other plugins just to add functionality, which is already prepackaged in single plugin, right? Mm. It makes it so much easier and faster. Mm. Yeah. Um, any more questions? Uh, I think the lady at the back. Right. Yeah. I think my question uh, feeds into what the gentleman asked. Mm. Uh, in addition to Learn Dash, did you uh, try other alternatives such as Moodle, which is again open source uh, learning management system? And we are does looking. That compare with uh, setting up something like this. Uh. Actually, we, we are looking into it because one of the school actually used Moodle yeah. and uh, Moodle is very good with mathematics uh, symbols. There's a lot of other functionalities yeah. such as setting up quizzes and you know, self-learning uh, platforms. Mm, so yeah. in terms of the response you receive from the students as well as the teachers, I mean, just mm. you know what's... Yeah, there's, uh, actually there's a lot of platforms up there. Uh, I haven't really explored Moodle, but I saw the demo from the school that used Moodle. Uh, so the quiz function is very easy to use also. But for this uh, chemistry case, uh, he only used the weekly submission and he also wants them to do the, the block thing as a task. So the group block things. That's why we didn't want the students to be going to multiple platforms or going to one. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you, everyone. If you want to ask other questions, you can always look for me. Thank you. Thank you, John.